வணக்கம் காட்ஸ் கிரியேஷன்ஸ் ஆர் ஆல்வேஸ் அமேசிங் ஜஸ்ட் லுக் அட் திஸ் வாட் கிவ்ஸ் திஸ் கை தி அஜிலிட்டி அண்ட் த ப்ரொசிஷன் டு ரன் ஸோ ஃபாஸ்ட் அண்ட் கேட்ச் ஹிஸ் ப்ரே பியூட்டிஃபுல்லி எவ்ரி டைம் ஹி லேண்ட்ஸ் ஆன் ஹிஸ் ஃபீட் த கிரிப் இஸ் ஸோ ஸ்ட்ராங் தட் ஹீ கேன் டேக் த நெக்ஸ்ட் லஞ்ச் ஃபார்வர்ட் வித் ரெனியூட் ஸ்பீட் அண்ட் எனர்ஜி so the secret lies in the padded paws that help in this grip but what about this guy who swings from tree to tree depending solely on the grip that his hand has on the branches he does not have padded paws like the previous guy but he has got something in his hand that we too have as human beings the skin on our hands and feet is very special it is thick and ridged and if you peel off this skin you will have an amazing system called the facial system or the retinacular system we shall see the normal anatomy of this facial or retinacular system and also what happens to this system in disease especially in dupuytren's contracture the facial or retinacular system in the human hand is beautiful it encompasses the entire palm and the fingers but we can see the different components by looking at the digital fascia that is the fascia in the fingers the digito palmar fascia the fascia occurring between the fingers and the palm the palmar fascia that is the fascia occurring exclusively in the palmar area and the fascia of the thumb and the first web space the digital fascia of the finger consists of the superficial fibro fatty palmar and dorsal fascia the lateral digital sheath which is a thin fascia under the skin on the lateral aspects of the fingers that is both the ulnar and radial aspects the grayson's ligaments that run from the phalanges to the lateral digital sheath volar to the neurovascular bundles on both sides and the cleland's ligaments sheets of fascia that lie between the phalanges and the lateral digital sheath dorsal to the neurovascular bundle the fascia present at the junction of the fingers and the palm consists of fibers like the spiral band the natatory ligaments and the vertical fibers of legu and juvara but we can understand these fibers better when we study the facial system in the palm we commonly refer to this palmar fascia as the palmar aponeurosis this is not just a flat sheet of fascia but a three dimensional structure it has longitudinal transverse and vertical components the longitudinal fibers consist of the pretendinous bands that is the part of the fascia that runs in front of the flexor tendons or superficial to the flexor tendons these longitudinal fibers are not just static sheets of fascia but they are very important because they have two important attachments let us see how if we consider this the skin of the palm this the flexor tendon and this the neurovascular bundle on one side these are the longitudinal fibers or the pretendinous bands one attachment is to the skin that is superficial to it and the second layer of attachment consists of what are known as the spiral bands of glossae which go deep to the neurovascular structures and the natatory ligament to fuse with the lateral digital sheath of the fingers the transverse fibers of the palmar aponeurosis can be divided into two groups 
The proximal transverse fibers are deeper and are sometimes known as the Skoog's ligament. The distal fibers are superficial and lie under the web spaces on the fingers. They are known as the natatory ligament. The facial system of the base of the thumb and thumb web consists of the distal commissural ligament of grapo which gives the thumb web the characteristic shape and the proximal commissural ligament. So far we have seen the longitudinal fibers and the transverse fibers of the palmar aponeurosis. The vertical fibers of the aponeurosis are also important. If this represents the palmar aponeurosis, there are vertical fibers that run superficially that is towards the skin and are known as the fibers of McGrother and deep fibers that run lateral to the flexor tendons, to the metacarpal bone and the palmar fascia of the interosseous muscles to divide the palm into eight compartments, four for the flexor tendons and four for the neurovascular bundles. So in the palm we find the palmar aponeurosis, the longitudinal fibers or the pretendinous bands, the proximal deep transverse fibers of Skoog the distal transverse fibers of the natatory ligament, the lateral digital sheaths, the Grayson's ligaments that are volar to the neurovascular bundle and the Cleland's ligaments that are dorsal to the neurovascular bundle and the distal and proximal commissural ligaments in the thumb web. Having seen the facial system of the hand and the fingers, what happens to this fascia in diseases like Dupuytren's contracture where this fascia is involved? When the fascia we have seen becomes diseased, it becomes thicker and thicker and ultimately gets converted to what are known as cords. Hence, fascia is physiological, the cords are thicker and pathological. They become shorter and hence cause contractures. Remember, we saw this fascia in the palm, the palmodigital area, the fingers and at the base of the thumb and thumb web. Are all these fascia converted to cords? Yes, we shall see how. In the palm, we have the palmar cords. The pretendinous bands that we have seen get converted to pretendinous cords which result in a metacarpophalangeal joint flexion contracture. The vertical fibers of McGrother when diseased become the vertical cords and they cause the triggering effect on the finger flexors. This is a clinical picture showing the effect of palmar cords. Between the fingers and the palm we have the palmodigital cords. The pretendinous bands, the spiral band, the lateral digital sheath and the Grayson's ligament together form a continuum that becomes what is known as the spiral cord. This displaces the neurovascular bundle medially and superficially. This animation demonstrates the formation of the spiral cord. The involvement of the pretendinous band, the spiral band, the lateral digital sheath and then the Grayson's ligament. This picture shows the spiral cord fully formed. Usually, the Cleland's ligament is not affected in Dupuytren's disease. The natatory ligament, when diseased, becomes the natatory cord, which causes web space adduction contracture in the fingers. These palmodigital cords result in a clinical picture like this. The digital cords could develop when there is involvement of the digital extension of the pretendinous band and become what is known as the central cord. This central cord can cause contractures of the proximal interphalangeal and distal interphalangeal joints and also displace the neurovascular bundles medially and superficially. The lateral digital sheet, when it is involved, it is known as the lateral cord and this causes PIP and DIP joints 
flexion contracture as shown in this clinical example. When the fascia of the thumb and thumb web space are involved, we get the thumb and web space cords. The proximal commissural ligament when involved becomes the proximal commissural cord which causes contracture of the thumb web. The distal commissural ligament when involved becomes the distal commissural cord which also causes first web adduction contracture. The pretendinous bands in the thumb when involved get converted to thumb pretendinous cords which cause thumb metacarpophalangeal joint flexion contractures. In this clinical example, you can make out the thumb web adduction contracture and minimal contracture of the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb also. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please do click on the shown links to see more about the fascinating anatomy of the hand. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery and ethics. Vanakkam.